MTV is an American cable television channel originally launched on August 1st, 1981. It currently serves as the home for a number of popular TV shows that you've probably heard of, such as The Jersey Shore, Beavis and Butthead, Catfish, MTV Cribs, Ridiculousness, Jackass, the list goes on. Although these days, MTV is more widely known for its hit reality shows, the channel was originally a central hub for music videos back in the 80s and 90s. Its programming was primarily geared toward teens and young adults, and it instantly became a cult hit not only in the US, but across the world as music lovers would all tune in and jam out to their favorite songs. But in the years since its inception, the channel has fallen off significantly in terms of relevancy as the internet became more prevalent and the channel pivoted away from its roots in music. In the 70s, music television was more focused toward live performances, and so music videos were kind of an afterthought. In 1979, executives Robert Pittman and John Lack felt teenagers were an overlooked and potentially lucrative demographic, and thus developed the format to cater to them. Pittman was a young kid still in his mid-20s who had major success in radio prior to MTV. So much so that John Lack, who was the executive vice president of Warner AMX, hired him as a program manager for its movie channel in 1979. Lack originally had the idea of doing an all music related channel, but it was Pittman who developed the concept of an all video channel, where records would be programmed on TV as they were on radio stations. So you started in, you know, you started in radio, you started moving up, I, I suppose in different areas, different roles. Um, how did that then lead to the creation of MTV? I mean, did, where, where, where I, I, I had a fairy tale career in radio. Um, and I didn't realize it at the time, this always happens, but I look back now and say I was 15 years old in Brookhaven, Mississippi, making $1.65 an hour as, as a disc jockey. And I had to sweep up the station as part of the deal. And uh, five years later, I was not only on the air, I was the program director. I mean, I controlled all the content on the NBC station in Chicago. And wow. three years beyond that, they sent me to WNBC in New York to program the flagship station of NBC at age 23. And I look back and how on earth in five years could that have happened? I have no idea. I mean, and uh, and so I was in that position. And, and when the cable industry began to build the big cities, which was the late 70s, early 80s, uh, that Warner Communications and American Express built a cable programming company called Warner MX Satellite Entertainment Corporation. And they recruited me to be the head of programming because I was this sort of superstar radio programmer. And they said, we think cable is going to be more like radio with special formats rather than like the broadcast network. And we played around with this newfangled thing called these video clips. And we did music news and information. And so I uh, uh, said, you know, I think we can do a video radio station, sort of the dream. Uh, I had a boss who loved the idea, really wanted to do music desperately, just loved music. So I said, here's what we do. We do a video radio station. It was only 10 years earlier that FM came on the scene by providing superior audio. I said, we'll do to FM what FM did to AM. We'll add video. And that was the pitch. And uh, that's the way, the way we got started. So in August of 1981, MTV was officially born. The channel's first video, which was only available in parts of New Jersey at the time, was the Buggles Video Killed the Radio Star. In addition to music videos, the program would also implement a number of music-related shows, including Headbangers Ball, Dial MTV, and Yo MTV Raps. The early format was similar to that of a top 40 radio station where they had young people known as video jockeys hosting the program. Many of these VJs became celebrities in their own right. MTV's five originals were Nina Blackwood, Mark Goodman, Alan Hunter, JJ Jackson, and Martha Quinn. MTV played primarily rock and roll as the genre was in its heyday. Many bands made appearances on the show such as Van Halen, Durant Duran, U2, Def Leppard, and many more. As the medium began to grow, labels and artists alike began to recognize its power and influence. The project quickly became a success, but of course not without some controversy. Catering to a primarily white demographic, MTV was reluctant to play anything not intended for their quote-unquote audience. That was until Michael Jackson came along and made one of the best music videos anyone had ever seen in Billie Jean, breaking the color barrier and completely changing the network and medium altogether. In 1989, MTV premiered one of its most iconic series with MTV Unplugged. Created by producers Robert Small and Jim Burns, the series would showcase recorded live performances of popular artists playing acoustic variations of their songs. The show aired regularly throughout the 90s and featured a number of classic performances such as Nirvana in 1993 and Jay-Z in 2001. In 92, the first season of The Real World was launched. This marked a pivotal time in MTV's history as the show was credited with launching the modern reality TV genre. It became the network 
Network's longest running program going from 1992 to 2017. Inspired by the popularity of youth oriented shows like Melrose Place and Beverly Hills 90210, the show is about a group of young adults living together while cameras film their every move. The show started as just an experiment but quickly became a cultural phenomenon as the show shed light on issues like race, class, gender, and sexuality. From 95 to 2000, MTV already began to pivot away from being primarily music video based as they cut back its programming by 36.5%. In February of 2001, MTV's president, Van Toffler, made a statement about the changes telling Billboard, clearly the novelty of just showing music videos has worn off. It's required us to reinvent ourselves to a contemporary audience, and added, our non-music shows like Jackass just get more press. The truth is, MTV never really made that much money from playing music videos 24-7. Even in its heyday, the network was merely staying afloat. That is, until they started implementing game shows like its first trivia show, Remote Control, which did really well. Former VJ Adam Curry told CNET, it was the best business decision they ever made. I can't blame MTV for abandoning music. Its job was to deliver ratings and make money, and the audience for music, even before YouTube, was never all that big. It was around this time where the network began venturing into adult animation with classic shows like Beavis and Butthead, Celebrity Death, Deathmatch, Undergrads, and Daria. In 98, MTV introduced Total Request Live, also known as TRL. The concept was a live daily top 10 countdown show consisting of a live audience. The show was filmed in a Windows studio in the middle of Times Square that allowed crowds to look in and featured live interviews with artists and celebrities. The show was extremely successful throughout the late 90s and early 2000s before its final episode aired in 2008. Throughout the 2000s, MTV would continue to put out reality shows such as The Osbournes, The Hills, My Super Sweet 16, and The Jersey Shore. In 2000, MTV was featuring music videos for up to 8 hours a day, but by 2008, that number went down to 3. Many speculate that it was in large part due to the rise of YouTube in 2005 that led to these changes, which makes sense as it was impossible to compete with a medium where you could pick the videos you wanted as opposed to MTV picking them for you. On top of that, once your favorite song ended, most people would just flip to the next channel. It's never good for a business to have someone tune in for five minutes then switch off to a competitor with longer form content. By February of 2010, MTV would drop the music television branding altogether with the network still premiering videos on occasion. Over the years, there have been a few attempts to restore the feeling of what MTV once was. In 2017, they tried to bring back TRL, but was put on hiatus just a year later. In 2018, they announced MTV Studios, created to revive its old classics and create new ones, but still the network doesn't have the same cultural cachet they once had. By the late 2010s, MTV's daily schedule consisted of just a few film broadcasts and marathons on top of marathons of select shows which brings us to the ridiculousness era if you tune into mtv right now you'll most likely see an episode airing and then again in 30 minutes and again in two hours in 2021 variety reported that during a stretch of 168 hours on mtv in late june 113 hours of programming were ridiculousness now why is this tanya giles a gm over at viacom cbs told variety we continue to think of cable as just one piece of our ecosystem when it comes to finding an audience for old school mtv particularly during the pandemic giles says ridiculousness grew the network's frequency and time spent viewing the more it was added to the schedule. We went from people coming one to two times a week to nearly six times a week to watch Ridiculousness. Particularly when COVID hit, now there's a lot of people at home. We know that this was a show that many generations could watch. It cut across different genders. It's laugh out loud. It's escapist. MTV used to be a massive part of the cultural zeitgeist, but that is no longer. Viacom CBS is continuing to make necessary changes as cable viewership continues to go down with the rise of streaming. Some say it's the audience's fault for not tuning in enough to keep its original format alive, but the network's decline appears to be inevitable. They're doing a good job staying afloat currently, but there will come a point where MTV completely sinks and fades into obscurity. 